We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. Uh oh, thrift diving. Hey, what's up? It's Serena Pia from thriftdiving.com, which is a podcast, a blog, and a YouTube channel that helps you decorate, improve, and maintain your home with paint, power tools, and thrift stores without sacrificing your budget, the environment, or style. Welcome to episode 65 of the Thrift Diving Podcast. Today, we are talking about leaks. And if you are a renter, you still want to listen to this because one day you're going to be a homeowner and this is important stuff. And you still might have some damage due to leaks. And if you're a homeowner, well, you definitely need to hear this today. (laughs) Let's start off with a couple of interesting facts that I found online. And I think some of these are pretty shocking. Like, for example, did you know that the average home insurance claim for water damage is about $11,000? That's only a fraction of the claim that we submitted recently for having a leak behind our fridge, but still, that's a lot of money. And at any given time, on any given day, there are about 14,000 people who are dealing with water damage emergencies. And you might even be one right now. We were one just recently. And let me tell you, it's frightening (laughs) when water is escaping and going places that it shouldn't be. It can be an emergency, but it can also be an annoyance that just seems chronic. And you're like, how in the world do I fix this? Where is it coming from? But also, if you've got a basement and if you're in a part of the world like here in Maryland, everybody, every home for the most part has a basement. If you have a single family home, you have a basement. But places like Florida, of course, you're not going to have a basement. But did you know 98% of the basements experience some sort of water damage? I mean, hello, it's underground. You're going to have some sort of water get in. So when it happens, what do you do? And nationwide, household water damage actually costs about $20 billion annually. (laughs) That's a lot of money. It's a lot of people, a lot of money. And it's frightening when you've got water coming in and you're not sure where it's coming from. What do you do? Well, today we're going to talk about that because I was thinking... Everything that I've been focusing on today, well, not just today, but this week in the last couple of weeks has been due to water damage. It's some sort of leak that has happened, whether in my shed, my home, when we first moved in, we had water leaks. And because it's so prevalent in my life, and I thought this would be a good topic for us to talk about. What do you do when you have a water leak? Where is it coming from? Why do people tend to ignore the chronic, I'm going to say not the, not, not the emergencies. Like if you've got a pipe that bursts, that's an emergency. You're going to immediately call a plumber, whether or not you've got a home warranty or not, you're going to call a plumber immediately. But I'm talking about like those chronic leaks that you know that you should address, but you don't. And why, why don't you? (laughs) Well, I was thinking about it today and there's several reasons why those little, and I'm going to call them little, But those chronic little leaks that happen around your home, why don't we address those? What are we so afraid of? And I think part of it is fear. Because when we moved into this house, we knew, this was back in 2010, we knew when we we bought this house, 1973, um, single family home, we were told up front, okay, the basement does have a leak in the Wizard of Oz door, you know, I call it the, I call it the Wizard of Oz door, you know, it's one of those basement doors that nobody uses anymore. Like now every basement is a nice, pretty little walkout basement door, it might be like a French door. I've got one of those ugly steelway doors, the kind that you have to like heave and hoe in order to even open it up. I mean, it's insane. Why? Whoever thought that these were good ideas, like these storm doors, I just, I don't get it. Anyway, we were told when we moved in that this door leaked. And when the inspector walked through, he said, yeah, you know, you can get this replaced easily, maybe $800. Well, I don't know what sort of like estimation he had going on in his mind, because to get that door replaced and not even have it like replaced with uh, cement because of the cost we ended up just getting pressure treated wood and had a company come in and rebuilt the foundation of that door and then put on a new door. So here I'm thinking, oh, this is going to solve the problem. No more water leaking in. And he said it was going to be $800, but it was actually 20, 
maybe 2800 maybe 22 2400 it was expensive a lot more expensive than what we imagined and i thought this is going to solve the problem no it did not solve the problem in fact during that time this was right after it was fixed well quote unquote fixed replaced my husband was in ghana and i believe it was just me here i think it, I, my my father-in-law had passed away at some point and there was maybe like a like a 10 year, was it a 10 year? There was some sort of memorial that they were having for him, like the one year or five year or something like that. So my husband went and it was just me and my kids. I had, no, just one. I think I was pregnant with number two. And so it was about 12 years ago. And suddenly, even though this door had been replaced, there was water gushing in. And I was so freaked out. Like, what in the world do I do? Like, I didn't even know what to do. And I really thought that that would be the end to the water leaking in, but it wasn't. We ended up having years and years worth of water coming in. And I don't even know what I did to curb the water. I think I went and just placed a tarp over it, something to just prevent any water even from even touching the door. And even to this day, we still have a, tar a tarp over that door. And I just remember the fear of, oh my gosh, how much is this going to cost to fix? Who do I even call? I just felt like I was in such um, a, a situation that I didn't know how to get myself out of. And for years, we we dealt with water coming in every time it would rain. And if it was a light rain, for the most part, we didn't have a problem. But if there was a steady rain, the first thing that I would do is run to the basement, just waiting to see a puddle of water coming in from that door. So we have that Wizard of Oz door. There's some steps that lead down. There's a stairwell. There is no drain. So any water that would get in trickling down the sides, it had nowhere to go except for into the basement. And we dealt with that for years. It was just a matter of, oh, there's rain. Let me run down and see if there's any water coming into the basement. And I think the reason why we didn't address it sooner is because of one of several reasons. And this might explain why you you would do the same, where you've got a water leak, something that's chronic. It might be a pretty big leak, but it's chronic. Every time it rains, it happens and it's been happening for a long time. And I think the reason why people tend to, I'm just going to say overlook these water leaks is because you don't know who to call. You don't know what to do to even address the problem. For example, with the basement, I mean, do I call a handyman to come and seal around the steelway door? Do I call a waterproof basement, for, you know, um, company in order for them to come in? And I mean, what do they want to do? Do they want to put in a sump pump? That's about $5,000, if not more. Do they need to do a French drain around my house? I believe I was quoted Five thousand, six, seven thousand dollars for them to do that. What was the answer? And I didn't know what the answer was. So because I didn't know what to do, I didn't do anything <laughs> except for clean the water up when it came into the basement. And so I think that's one reason why people don't address the leaks in their home is because they don't know how to address the problem and the cost. The, the cost can be, you know, minimal because you think you know what the problem is and. Maybe it's actually much more simple than what you expect, or it could be a lot more expensive than what you expected. And if you're not familiar with what people tr traditionally do or what the solution is, you might be afraid that you're going to be taken for a ride. And that's what I felt with these basement waterproof companies. I just really didn't trust them. When we moved in and noticed that the basement had like a musty smell to it, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, well, we've got to get some airflow down here. That's obviously what the answer is. And there was a guy that came from a waterproofing company and he sold us this easy breeze. I mean, it was just this thing that they wanted to install in the utility room. He told me, all you need is just some airflow in this basement. So this easy breeze, it's going to be a thousand dollars. And if you make your decision right now, before I leave, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. If you make your decision right now, before I leave, then you know, you'll be able to get it for a thousand, but I can't promise you that price once I walk out the door. Let, let me call my manager. Let me see the best price that I can get for you. And I remember standing there in the living room with my, with my husband, not sure of what to do. Do we move on this and take advantage of this opportunity? Or do we just let the guy walk out with the solution that I think we need? Or 
that I really don't know if we need. And we ended up going in that direction. <laughs> we got them to install this stupid thing that literally is like an exhaust fan. That's not what we needed. We probably just needed a dehumidifier and to address the water coming in via the Wizard of Oz door. But because I had a bad experience with that first company years ago when we first moved in, I didn't want to deal with another basement waterproofing company. I just didn't trust them. I didn't trust them. And even though later I had more, I would say, experience in dealing with contractors and companies, and I felt like I could hold my own, I still wasn't familiar with basement waterproofing. So they could have seen me as someone who could easily be duped, right? Now, that's probably one of the reasons why if you have a a leak, you're not calling somebody because you're afraid that you're going to get taken advantage of. It's going to cost you a lot of money. And then the other reason why some people don't address the leaks and just ignore them is because sometimes a leak seems insignificant. So we just deal with it when the rain comes. Instead of getting to the root of the problem, we just go and run and clean it up. And even though it does spark some fear inside of us, we think, okay, As long as I can get some towels down, it's not like there's two inches of water in the basement. It's just a little bit of water coming under the door. We're fine. We're fine. It's not a big deal. And I think if you are someone who's dealing with a water leak or you have a water leak in the future, don't let one of these reasons be the reason why you ignore it. No water leak should ever be ignored because it will create so much damage. Even if you think that it's just a little leak it could actually be a much bigger leak. And until you get somebody to come and take a look at it, have multiple companies come. So you can at least ad- evaluate, okay, am I getting the same response? Uh, who, who are these people coming? What are, we, what are we being told? How can we make the best decision based on three, four, five different quotes? So let's talk about what happens if you do ignore it, <laughs> okay? What I like to think is, You know, the cost that you spend today to address a problem is minimal compared to the cost that you are going to spend later on when you're trying to address it down the road. Not only are you going to experience probably a bigger cost because you just stuck your head in the sand and didn't want to, you know, deal with it, but you could be affecting your health. (laughs) In fact, if you listen to episode 15 of this podcast, it's called Mold, Is Your House Making You Sick? I did a really good interview with a man who owns a mold remediation company. And this is a pretty good episode where he talks about some of the health things that can happen with mold in your house. I mean, the minute something organic gets wet, within 24 to 48 hours, it's starting to create mold. That's how quickly it happens. So just imagine that leak that was coming into this basement. I mean, it was years, years of leaks just repeatedly happening to the same spot. And who knows how that may have affected us. You know, later I did address it and I tore out, I'm going to say I tore out about 12 inches of water or 12 inches of water. (laughs) Thank God it wasn't 12 inches of water, 12 inches of drywall. And I saw that there was... Uh, some of the bottom plate of the framing, the, the two by four framing that's here in the basement, I had to cut that out and replace it. And then that's when I noticed, oh, the door jam on this door is also moldy. Guess what? I've got to rip the door out and put in a new door. That was an experience. It took me forever to figure out how to get that door. And I think it took me like two days to figure out how to shim that door properly in order to get it to close and open. <sighs> It was something that I was like not wanting to experience again, but I figured out how to do it. I got it in there. And I also did some, uh, some, I don't even know what it was, some sort of, I think it was, what was the name of that product? Oh gosh. It's like right on the tip of my tongue. Um, but I, I caulked and sealed all around in the, um, area I didn't do on the outside of the Wizard of Oz door, but I did on the interior. So anywhere where that door was sitting on the pressure treated wood, I sealed the heck out of that thing. And I still keep a tarp on it just as extra insurance. Okay, that's the first line of defense. But then I also need to make sure that there's no water coming in because of all the sealing that I did. And it's been good. We haven't had any more leaks there since. But, you know, if I had continued to let that fester and just put my head in the sand and I didn't want to do anything about it, what would it be now? What effect would it have on our health? Because we've got mold 
here in the basement because of that water that kept coming in and coming in. And the more that it comes in and the more that you ignore it, the more expensive it's going to be to your health and to your house. So instead of putting your head in the sand, figure out who that person is that you need to call. If you need to call multiple people, as I said, multiple waterproofing companies, multiple contractors, get your, you know, do some YouTube videos and see, maybe it's an easy fix. It's maybe it's not as expensive as having someone to come and put in a French drain. Maybe I just need some caulking around the door. So make sure that you're not ignoring these things. And also too, you know, if you ignore it, you can actually lose your valuables. So, you know, if you're somebody, I'm talking about basement leaks now, but even in other parts of your home, if you're ignoring it, you could lose your valuables, right? You don't want to come home one day and you've got two inches of water in the basement and everything that's sitting in the basement, guess what? It's ruined. (laughs) That's not what you want. And it's not going to go away. The rain is always going to come. The pipes, uh, pipes aren't always going to leak, but they can happen. So you have to address these problems and not let it be something that just festers for years and years to come. So let's talk about some of the places where leaks commonly come from. And they really can come from any place in your home. Wherever there's water, you can get a leak. So in the examples that I've experienced in terms of leaks in my home, for example, with the basement, I'm using the basement a lot, but that's not the only place, of course, where you can get leaks. But that was where (laughs) we've had a lot of water. So poor grading around your home. So if you think about it, your home is sitting on this foundation and any place where the earth, the land surrounding, the dirt surrounding your home, if it's, if it's actually graded, mean, meaning sloped towards your home, that's where the water is going to flow. And you do not want that water sitting right next to your basement, your foundation. You just don't want it because it's going to go straight down those basement walls and it can come right in. And that's what happened to us several years ago. There was a huge rainstorm that we had and there was water that was piling up on the side of the house. Well, where did it go? Inside the basement. And it was not, thankfully it wasn't one to two inches, but it was a pretty large area. So I had to come have a landscaping company come in. I'm not kidding you. It was about $2,400 to get the entire house regraded. And I'm talking about like loads of soil that they brought in. There was maybe two or three guys. I think there's probably three or four guys, landscaping guys that came in and graded the entire property. But the one thing that he did that I thought was cool is that on that side of the house where the water had started pooling, he actually installed a drain that went from that location all the way to the end of the yard, to the back of the yard. And he sloped it ever so slightly, right? Because you don't need a big incline for water to flow. You just need a little bit of an incline for it to drain where you need it to drain away from the house. And since that time, thank God, crossing my fingers, we've never had any other issues with that side of the house. And every now and then I'll go over there and make sure that there's no leaves that are blocking the drain. And you'll want to do that too around your home, even in your basement stairwells, make sure that there's no, if it's exposed to the outdoors, make sure there's no leaves that are blocking the drain. Because if if it is, the water can't actually go down. So that can flood your basement if you've got an exterior drain in your stairwell near your basement and it's covered with leaves, <laughs> that water has to go somewhere if those leaves are blocking the drain. So that's why I'll make sure in this in the fall, winter time, whenever those leaves are coming down, that I don't have leaves blocking that drain. And crossing fingers, thankfully, we've never had a problem with that side of the house again. So it could be the grading around your home that you might, now it's something you can do yourself, but it's a lot of backbreaking work. So just, you know, get a few quotes if that's something that you need to have done, or even just have a landscaping company come and have them do an assessment and ask them about the grading around your home. And they may even say, well, everything looks pretty good over here. But I, I notice on this side, you, de- you do need some additional grading. So the water is sloping away. You might also get some leaks around doors and windows. And this is something that I am dealing with in my she shed. Remember the last time I told you I did all this caulking around my door? I still have leaks coming in. <laughs> It's insane. I can't believe my level of patience, right? Like I am the most insanely patient person because I keep contacting Tough Shed and I'm like, hey, guess what? All those leaks that I'm experiencing and we cocked it up, it's still leaking. 
But thankfully, the original uh, installer, his name's Rob, he's been really, really great. I told, I, I texted him, I said, Rob, after all that caulking we did, we still have leaks. And so I think what we need is there's this product that you can get. And some of you who've had doors and windows installed, you might know what I'm talking about. It's literally like either a piece of metal or a piece of plastic. And it's called a, oh gosh, it's escaping me, but it's a pan seal, a pan flashing seal. And you put that down in the rough opening. So if there's any water that, and it's sloped, it's very slightly sloped. So any water that gets in, any minute little bit of water that gets into your windows or doors, it automatically is going to slope back out to the exterior. It's not going to, you know, flow into the crevices of your framing underneath the door or to the corners. And that's what's been happening. And there was a website that I looked at yesterday and it said, you know, no matter how much caulking you use, that should not be your line of defense to keep the water from coming in. Like you really need that flashing. You need that membrane to protect all of that area. So when I still noticed that there was leaks coming in the door, I texted Rob, told him, hey, I think we need this flashing. I'll buy it. And, you know, can can we do that instead of some of the other things you mentioned? And he's like, yeah, definitely. Let me know when it comes in. I'll come over and we'll take the doors out. We got to do the French doors removal and even the side door leaks too. Both doors leak in my shed, which is freaking insane. But, you know, it is also exposed to... Uh, rain. So that's another thing. If you have a door, like a French door, sliding glass door that is directly exposed to rain, you're more likely to get leaks because there's no protection. There's no roof over those doors. And so any rain, especially during, you know, like uh, the really heavy rains where the wind is whipping around and the rain is slamming against your door, there's very little protection. And if that's the case and you're getting water leaks, you might have to get, you know, you might have to get that door removed and make sure that you've got the proper flashing in those doors and windows. And that's my problem. And I don't understand why Tough Shed doesn't build all sheds with this. Like, why? Why I can't be the only one that has a leaking door. Like, I find that very hard to believe. <laughs> I find it very hard to believe. But I'm so thankful that Rob is someone that I can work with and get this done and do it properly. So crossing my fingers on that. So that might be something that's happening to you. You know, you also want to look around your doors and windows and make sure that the caulking that is there hasn't worn away and needs to be replaced. This can happen at your doors and windows, but it can also happen on your roof. And surprise, surprise, several months ago, I'm going to say probably, let's say five months ago, six months ago, the kid's bedroom, I, I looked up and I'm like, why is there a brown stain on the roof? I mean, on the ceiling, <laughs> the drywall of the ceiling. And there was a roof leak because... Right along the chimney, there was some, some, I think right above the flashing, there was some caulking that had come off. And I think I paid, I want to say it was maybe like $135 for them to come and do an inspection, just a roofing company. And he came out, he noticed, and, you know, oh, remember, actually, I think I told you about that because I, I couldn't have the company come out until they removed some of the, uh, the solar panels. Remember that story from several, like, episodes ago, come to find out the place he needed to caulk had nothing to do with this, the, uh, the panels on the roof. <laughs> so I ended up paying like maybe $300 or something like that in order for the, the guys to remove the panels. And that wasn't even where the leak was coming from. So, but it was the caulking around the flashing around the chimney. So that can happen too. And I think that's why it's probably a good idea for your roof to get inspected maybe once every year or two. There might be shingles that blow off that you just, you know, you need somebody up there to just replace them and, or just reseal certain areas that look like it's, it's broken down over time, you know, replace that caulking. So make sure that you do that done. It's, it's not, I mean, get that done. It's not expensive. Like I said, $150, $135 just to do a roof check. I, I think it's very valuable. Also too, you might have kids, young kids, and they do not understand that the shower curtain has to be inside of the shower when you shower. <laughs> a friend of mine who lives down the road, she was telling me that every time the kids shower, there'd be water leaking. They had a, a plumber come. They actually cut holes, I think, in the ceiling to try to find out where this leak was coming from. And then in the end, the only thing they could find is that, oh, you know, when the kids shower, 
they're not putting the shower curtain. That's probably what it is because your floor is getting completely drenched. So if you have a leak that's coming when someone's showering, that might be what it is. Check around the, the tub, see if there's some caulking that needs to be replaced and teach your kids how to put the shower curtain inside. My kids do the, th the same thing sometimes until I had to tell them like, hey, there's too much water on this floor, guys. Like this has to be inside, not outside. And you know, you might have pipe leaks. Those things happen. But uh, you know, one thing that I, in my experience, I've really only had one pipe leak. And that was the one that happened recently behind the refrigerator, right? And that's what sparked this whole new tile flooring that we just had done this week. Yes, guys, the, the tile is done. It looks so good. It's like this beautiful light gray color. It's almost like a steel gray color. And uh, I know I didn't do it myself. I did not do it myself. The insurance company, because it was a, a claim that we filed, the insurance company pretty much picked up half of the tab. I paid the other half and just went ahead and did the kitchen because it had this old 19, well, I say 1970s, but at some point somebody had put in some laminate tile in there and it was just, it was in bad condition and just was not a good product. And then in the foyer, there was an older tile, but it it was outdated. So when they came in to do uh, a measurement for the kitchen, I said, you know what, just, just go ahead and measure everything. Let's just do the entire kitchen and foyer so that it flows from one room to the next. And it looks great. It looks really good. So I'm super excited about it. I was trying to film just a little aside here. I was trying to film the entire process, but one of the guys called me out. <laughs> He's like, you know, I'm standing there with my camera and I have my big camera and I have my cell phone camera. And he says to me, he's like, and you could tell he was just irritated. He said, are you done taking pictures now of the floor? And I thought, you know, he was being funny, but no, he was basically telling me, he said, I, I, I'm okay with pictures, but I don't want video taken. And I'm thinking, dude, this is my house. <laughs> I said to him, I said, I, I'm not, I'm not filming you, but because he had made uh, a comment about it, it made me feel uncomfortable even recording anything. So some of the action where they were actually putting the tile down, I didn't get very much of that. So I tried to sneak a little bit here and there, but you know, I thought it would be a great video to at least show you the process of what they were doing. But yeah, so I kind of felt like that was a failed attempt <laughs> at getting really good footage of my flooring being done. Um, but anyway, that's a different aside. But anyway, those are the places where leaks can come from. They really can come from any place. I mean, if you've got a washer and dryer, I mean, a washer, you might have a leak there eventually. Your kitchen sink, I mean, any, any place that has water, you have a potential to have a leak. And that's why if you have places in your home, kitchen, I mean, if everybody has a kitchen and, and bathroom, right? But you might have a laundry room. You might have another place where you do, you know, maybe a craft room where you're always doing some sort of water thing. There's a sink in there. Any place where you can have a water spill or a leak, you should have tile. And that's another reason why we decided to do tile in the kitchen, because if there is another leak or if the kids spill water on the floor, there's not that, uh-oh, how are we going to fix this damage because it's seeped underneath? At least with tile, I feel a little bit better that it's just going to be sitting there on top. It's not going to seep through and totally damage the floor underneath. There could still be some situations where that could happen, but I just feel that it's it's better than, you know, some of the other types of floorings you can put down like wood or, you know, even vinyl. There are cracks and things that can get through. Um, so that's what I would recommend in terms of how to prevent or minimize water damage. Use tile in the kitchens, bathrooms, laundry rooms. The second thing, and this is a tip that I want everyone to pay attention to. I don't care if you're renting. I don't care if you're a homeowner. If you are someone who lives in a house, hello, that's all of us, house or apartment, things can leak and you can have damage and not even know that the leak is happening. So there's, there's two products I would recommend. And it doesn't necessarily have to be these two products, but you need something to alert you if there's water damage. So for example, the ones that I like to use, and actually I have both of these, but the ones that I like to use is called Leak Frog. And they might go by other names, but it literally looks like a round puck, like a disc. And they make them cute. You know, the ones we have, there's some that looks like frogs. We have some that looks like ladybugs, but they have these little sensors on the bottom. So if water 
if it touches water or moisture, it's immediately going to start beeping, beep, 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 beep. Like it's pretty loud. And I've got them behind my toilets. I've got one down in the basement near the water heat where the, where the water heater is. I've got one next to my washing machine. And these are good to put underneath the sinks too. So I've got one underneath, underneath the kitchen sink because I've had some leaks there as well and didn't know about it <laughs> until later. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Where's all this wetness coming from? So those aren't very expensive. I'll leave links down below. You can find them on Amazon. But the other one that I really like is called Honeywell Lyric. This one's a little bit more expensive. But what I like about it is that you can, you can set up the app, the Honeywell app on your phone. So if it detects water, it's going to send you an email and it's going to alert you. It's good. Does it send you a text? I don't know if it sends you a text. I don't think it sends a text. Hmm. I'm trying to think if they've sent text. I don't think they've actually sent a text. So I have to look into that. It doesn't have to be Honeywell Lyric. Any device that can give you an alert to let you know, hey, there's water here. Quick, hurry up and go take care of this is what you want. And what I like about the Honeywell Lyric is that because you'll get that email and I'll have to go back and see. I really hope it does send you a text. But if not, look for a company, a leak detector that will text you. But if you're away from home, you want that text that says, hey, your, you know, your toilet just overflowed. I mean, whatever. Maybe your 21-year-old son is there and you know how boys are. <laughs> they don't pay any attention to what's going on in the toilet. They don't even flush it. So or is that, or is that just my kids? But you want that notification before the damage happens, the, I mean, extensive damage happens. The leak frogs, the cute little leak bugs, those will just alert you if you're home. They still have their value and they still have their place. You can actually do them with the Honeywell Lyric because, you know, the minute I hear any kind of beeping, I automatically think, oh my gosh, what's going on? Where's the water? And sometimes it's just the dryer beeping to let me know that the laundry's done. But in my mind, I'm like, there's a leak somewhere. What's going on? So it's loud. It lets you know it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop beeping until you remove it from the water. And it's, it's secure. I mean, it works and the batteries last for a long time. So use the early detection systems, get them for every place where there can be a water leak. And if you can use the Honeywell Lyric or find one that will actually text you as well. And if you do have a leak, use a dehumidifier not a fan. This is something that the guy covered in episode 15. He said a lot of times what, what people will do is they'll think just putting a fan on it will help to dry it. That's not what you want to do. He even said that, let's say, for example, you had a rodent problem in your wall cavity and you didn't know, and there's water that's coming through that particular area. Well, now you put a fan on it and it's blowing this nasty stuff all over your, your room. So let's skip the fans and let's do the dehumidifiers. Make sure that you're opening up the wall cavity. So if you have a leak, remove that drywall, just cut it out. And I have a video down below on how to replace drywall. So don't feel afraid to remove a piece of drywall. It's really not hard to make a patch. Even if it's a big, let's say it's like two foot by two foot, three foot by three foot. It's okay. It's not hard to, to fix. It really isn't. I mean, even if you you know, never done any DIY. If you follow my tutorial, you can do it pretty easily. So you definitely want to remove that organic material immediately. And one thing I was really surprised though, when we had the leak in the kitchen behind the refrigerator, there was a company that the insurance company had sent called SurfPro. These com this company is well known probably nationally for water, um, I don't know if they do mold remediation, but they do cleanup, right? So if you've got water damage, they'll come in, they'll bring their big de dehumidifiers, they'll remove drywall and things like that. I was surprised that they didn't actually remove my wet drywall that was in the ceiling of the basement. That is what was shocking to me. And they said they needed to test it first because my home is built, you know, in 73, they wanted to make sure it didn't have asbestos. So I don't know if they tested it and... I don't know whatever happened with that because they never cut out the drywall. <laughs> I thought they were going to, and they didn't. So even in my basement right now where, the, where it was wet because of that leak, nobody ever removed the drywall. So that's something that I'm going to have to do. And even if, let's say 
the leak is gone, right? There's no more possibility of a leak there. You still want to get rid of that drywall because it is an organic material. And even, and this is what we covered in episode 15. That's why you should go back and listen to it. Even if the leak has been cleared up, right? There's no more water. If there is mold that has grown there, all it takes is something to reactivate it, right? The bleach doesn't kill mold. And we discussed that in episode 15. It just doesn't. The best thing is to just remove those organic materials and replace the drywall. Don't try to just paint over it. Remove it because it can be reactivated from another spill or, or, you know, like another leak or maybe the humidity gets high and it gets reactivated. Like anything can happen there. So it's best just to remove it. Don't try to paint over it and forget that it ever happened. So another thing that I like to do, another tip to help prevent or minimize water damage is to use PVC molding and trim when doing the flooring. This is something that I've started to do in all the rooms that I make over, whether it's a bathroom, living room, whether it's going to be my shed. I love PVC molding because if you have a leak on the floor, of course, your flooring can get ruined. But if you have PVC molding on the floor, like, you know, in quarter round, that stuff, it doesn't grow mold. It's, it's not an organic material. It's just plastic. And, or I mean, it's PVC, right? It's made out of plastic. So it's not going to suck up any of the water, any of the moisture. So if you need to pull that off in order to kind of let things dry out um, behind or to replace the drywall, you can put that PVC right back in place. You won't have to worry about mold growing behind, at least not on, now the mold could grow on the drywall, but it's not going to damage the PVC molding or the quarter round. So I would definitely go with that going forward and also get flood insurance. I don't have flood insurance, but part of me is actually thinking about it because it's not very expensive. It can cost maybe about $700 a year. And when you think about everything that you could potentially lose and have to come out of pocket for, it's really not a big expense. Some of you may already have it depending on where you live, but I I don't think that it's, I don't think it's something that we should not get. I think it's something that we should have. You never know when you may need it. And especially with, with like climate change, I bet you there are people who are experiencing like flood situations, even if it's only an inch flood situations that never had them before. So if we get flood insurance, it could actually help save us a bunch of money and time and effort. I mean, down the road, because we can just call the insurance company and, you know, it really is helpful when you're in a crisis like that and you call the insurance company and they're like, hey, you know what? We're going to call ServPro and get them right out to you. You know, it's covered by your flood insurance. And you're like, oh my gosh, yes. Like it feels great when you've got somebody you can call and you don't feel like you're doing it all on your own. Now in the basement, another option here is to keep your materials, anything that you've got stored, stored down there in plastic containers And if you can't put it in plastic containers, at least try to keep it up off the floor. So, you know, even if you have an inch of water, half an inch of water, you're not going to have boxes of, you know, your kids christening gowns and, you know, their baby shoes ruined, completely ruined because it was sitting down on the floor in a box that you haven't touched for the last 15 years. So that can be expensive, replacing all your cardboard cardboard boxes with plastic containers, But the fact that it's going to protect what's in there, your valuables, it's worth it. And another tip, and I actually do this myself, (laughs) is at least in your basement, try to, and you're putting furniture down there, try to use the um, kind of furniture that you'd put out on your patio, like the indoor outdoor furniture. I've got some that Home Depot, I'd done a, a video with Home Depot some years ago, and they had sent me gosh, I want to say it was almost two, two sets of patio furniture. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do with two sets until I realized, wait a minute, I can put one set in the basement. So I've got a love seat and I've got two rocker chairs. And I feel comfortable that if there was a problem in the basement or even just moisture, period, it's not going to grow anything, right? The pillows, um, even the rug is an indoor outdoor rug. So I think it is. Maybe this one's not, maybe this one's not, but it's not very expensive. However, if you're using materials like pillows, uh, rocking chairs, uh, even just the, the coffee tables, the side tables, you don't have to use it on your patio or 
your deck. You can use it in your basement. So if there is a problem, it's not going to affect that, that furniture. So those are the tips I have to help you to prevent or minimize whatever water damage or mold in your house. And again, this doesn't necessarily have to pertain to people who are just homeowners. People who are renting still have homes. They still have memories and boxes that are sitting on the floor in the basements of the townhouses that they're renting. You know, you could be renting a home. Doesn't mean you have to be renting an apartment. So all of these tips can be valuable for people, no matter who you are. And at some point, if you are someone who's never had to deal with a water leak, guess what? I guarantee that you will have a situation. <laughs> and I feel sorry. For, I'm going to say up front before it even happens, I'm so sorry because it sucks going through water damage in your house. It really does. And it can be some of the most nerve wracking uh, experiences because not only are you not sure who to call sometimes or, you know, you're dealing with losses, it's it's kind of worrisome because what if you what if you don't know where the water's coming from? That's even worrisome too. How do you how do you fix this going forward? And I know that my sh my shed has caused me a lot of stress because I just want to finish the floor, but I can't put the cart before the horse. You know, what without flooring, I don't want to set a desk up in there. I don't want to bring in my good computer because I don't have a desk. <laughs> I don't want to do anything on the walls because I want to see what tools and materials I'm going to be bringing in first. So there's a lot of things that are being held up because I don't have flooring in there. So yeah, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm being very patient. It's going to happen. And I'm just making sure that I'm working with Tough Shed to get this fixed and crossing my fingers that it works out. I, of course, I will record the entire thing. <laughs> so you can actually see what we do in order to try to fi fix that leak. And if it works, then you'll, you'll know that, okay, if I get a shed, I need to make sure that they're putting down the right flashing so that I don't have a leak at my door. Anyway, that's what I got for you today. Water leaks are a huge headache, but I mean, it's just a, it's just the nature of living in a house. <laughs> You're going to have leaks, but at least hopefully with this podcast, you'll have a better idea of what things you should do and shouldn't do and realize that the sooner you deal with it, instead of putting your head in the sand and forgetting about it, the better off your house would be, the better off your stress levels will be, and your health as well. All right, guys, I enjoyed this episode. Please come back next week for episode 66. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but it's going to be something great, something that's going to help you, and hopefully we'll be able to talk about something fun, because I always enjoy these topics. I think they're fun. I'm kind of a nerd like that. <laughs> I love talking about home stuff. If you have an idea for a topic that you want to talk about, please send me an email, serena at thriftdiving.com, or you can hit me up on Instagram at thriftdiving. Let me know. I would love to do a little bit more interviews. I know when I first started this podcast, I was doing a lot of interviews, and I haven't actually had anyone approach me about doing an interview. So I want to come up with some different ideas, some fresh ideas, and you might even have an idea of someone that you would like to hear more of, you know, maybe somebody about gardening. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to bring somebody in to talk about some gardening things. How about that? That's a great idea. All right, guys, I will talk to you next week. Be sure to enjoy your weekend and hopefully you stay dry because it's super wet out there, at least in my neck of the world in Maryland. Okay. I'll see you next episode.